I think the entire experience of 28 Seeds was a really interesting way to branch something that was mostly a musical endeavor into the visual and performance aspect of art, which is something that everybody in the band is very interested in doing. No, the show's a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun. A ton of fun. Tons of fun. It's kind of a complicated show because there's microphone cues and uh, f over 400 cue lab cues and then mixing the band itself. So it's been a challenge, but it's been a good challenge. And I love the band. I just groove out to the band when I'm up at the booth. You walk up pretty loud. All of them top to bottom, everyone in this company, everyone in this ensemble is super talented, committed, disciplined, focused. Honor to play every night in this in this set and with, with with the lighting and the atmosphere that they've created because it's it's kind of like playing inside of a dream. All these words, mama, yeah. is like the Greek chorus of the play. It goes without saying because we're on stage the whole time. It always seemed unnatural to me, musicals in general, because people were like, oh, let's have a conversation. Now let's sing about it. And that seemed really odd to me. <laughs> During the entire production, I called myself the luckiest playwright ever because playwrights never, ever, ever get to see their audience every single day of a production, watching how they react to what they wrote. Like, I was incredibly lucky for that. Thanks, Jojo. Uh, I need to put it on the other thing, but... What are we playing first? There's rabbits and... We're gonna do rabbits? Yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of and then we'll do a little bit of Sky is Falling. theater are you never clap and you never laugh and you never express anything and we've been trying to be like no be loud be crazy that's what we want this isn't Boy, traditional theater this isn't know. West Side Story <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's awesome about this show is it feels like a rock show with a play around it um, which has always kind of been our bag but there's just a lot more script to this I had to have my foot in, or both feet in both worlds. And it was interesting balancing between, you know, being a rock musician and coming from that very specific, not only performance style, but like line of thought. 
By sheer force of will, Walter has created a network of people that, with his driving steam engine force, uh, we just will a world into existence. Walter's wire force is real now. And it's because of the magic you inspire as our Maurice Sendak spirit <laughs> animal. He's our Maurice Sendak spirit animal. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, art's always been a part of my life. Every single day, I, I always make something, I can't help it. And if I don't draw, I start to like feel physically ill. Just same with music, if I don't play music, I start to feel really nauseous and, and odd. I start to slip out of my dimension. <laughs> Rehearsal process, the choreographer oh, and Jason and everybody comes in and, and makes it into something like real and polished and sets kind of. I feel like the opening night of the show to where we are on closing weekend, it's like a different show. Better. Thanks. I have to say that I think Walter's one of the most prolific. And, and kind of easy flowing artists that I've ever worked in songs just kind of fall out of his face and his body. It is quite amazing, especially after working with many other Boston area musicians who struggle to write these lyrics and put these songs together. To see somebody literally sit down at the guitar and just have it pour out, it, it's amazing. Like it, we have to filter it, we have to catch it somehow. So a lot of band practice is how can we rein in those ideas and develop them because he just keeps spitting them out. Everyone's been really responsive, uh, all sorts of audiences, people that want to dance with us immediately, people that spend a lot of time whispering to each other. Some people are shocked and titillated, but everyone seems to get it. Everyone seems to take some sort of surreal take home with it. Um, and we have a lot of repeat offenders, and they get extra rowdy every time, and for that we are incredibly grateful. Some audiences are more active than others, but most of them have been enjoying it quietly, even if they aren't making a lot of noise. But we make them dance with us even though they may not seem like they Force really want them to, to dance. <laughs> and they're always happy to do it after. Yeah. And so it's amazing, I mean, because a lot of times, you know, when you do theater stuff, you're doing someone else's work, you know, and this is a completely original thing that we, we all did together. Um, so it's really rewarding when it works out, like this has worked out. And uh, it's super important to me, and I, I really hope that we do more of it in the future. For me, the thing that's really thrilling about doing a project like this, especially doing it with people who may not have done that particular thing before, is getting to see them do something that's outside of their comfort area and succeeding at it hands down. So although Meff had written several plays before, she'd never had anything produced and none of us had ever worked with a theater company before. We had several of the actors who've done, you know, maybe characters far outside themselves because they're that kind of actor, but we had other actors who hadn't done anything um, except very staid and stoddard kind of theater. And putting those people together and seeing them work out what their relationships were within the play and then sort of growing and blossoming into those characters was really fascinating. And then getting to see an audience of ours coming in to a world completely foreign to them. A lot of the people who came to our shows were not theater people, but they came to see a theater piece because we wrote it, and now they are fans of theater like we would do again. So I think that's awesome. Everybody, is it real?